Okay, the LM model or the liquid assets market model is actually quite a simple uh, model to understand. Okay, so let's start with the definitions like we always do. So what is the LM function? The LM function okay, is equilibrium in the liquid assets market in relation to interest rates and income. Okay, and uh, when we talk about liquid assets, it actually means money. Okay, it's just a fancy term for, for money. And uh, we call it liquid assets because it can be easily uh, used for transactions. So that's why it's called liquid. Okay, so liquid assets is money. And the demand for liquid assets is a downward sloping curve, just like the demand for almost anything. Okay, it's denoted by L and bracket Y not. The reason for this is because Y affects the demand for liquid assets. Think about it, if your income were to be higher, would you be demanding for more money? Yes. Okay, so there we have it. When income increases, the demand for liquid assets will increase. And we know that when there is an increase in demand, the demand curve shifts to the right. Okay, and when there is a decrease in income, okay, there will be a lower demand for liquid assets and the demand curve is going to shift to the left. Now, the intuition for this is actually quite simple. If you had more money, you will want to withdraw it from the bank okay, and hold it in your hands right, for, for expenditure. If your income is lower, you want to put it in the bank so that you, know, you can gain interest, uh, interest revenue from, from putting your money in the banks. Okay, so that is why the demand for liquid assets would drop if my income was low. Okay, so let me just show you how to derive the liquid assets, uh, yeah, liquid assets model. Okay, and I have a few graphs over here. We'll go through this slowly. Okay, on the left side over here, okay, I have the diagram for the liquid assets market. Okay, now I'm going to use this to derive the LM function, which is on the right side. Okay, uh, this will eventually end up as your ISLM model. Okay, when we combine it with your IS curve. So looking at the liquid assets market, okay, we have the demand curve which is downward sloping. Okay, it is uh, denoted by L, and uh, inside is Y not. Okay, and this vertical line over here is the money supply. Now, why is it a vertical line? Because the money supply at any one point of time in the economy will be constant throughout, unless the government does something about it. Okay, so um, on the x-axis, you realize that we have got money supply, and I took money supply divided by P. The reason is because we are looking at real balances. This is called real balances. Um, how, what is the purchasing power of the money that you have? That is why we divided it by price. It's similar to real income, so sh there shouldn't be any confusion over there. Okay, and same thing for money supply, uh, denoted by M, S, O, uh, not, divided by P. Okay, so this vertical line here is a supply curve for liquid uh, for for money. Okay, and at this point there will be an equilibrium interest rates which is uh, R not. So basically, what it means is that uh, when this is situ the situation, the amount of demand for money is this much and the supply is this much, the banks will be paying R not amount of interest. Okay, so how am I going to derive my LM function? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change income. Okay, I'm going to change income, I'm going to increase my income. So when I increase my income, what happens is that my LM curve, uh, sorry, my demand curve is going to shift outwards. So I have L, Y, 1. Okay, so at this point over here, okay, what happens is that actually at this amount of interest, this level of interest, we have moved from this point, we will call it A, over here to point B. Okay, so as you can see, over here, we have actually an excess demand for liquid assets. So when we are holding so much money, okay, uh, the, the, the banks will want us to put some money in the bank because they need to use it for investment purposes. So uh, if, the, if the demand for money is like increasing, the people will start to withdraw money from the banks and the banks need this money for their own investment purposes. So what they will do to entice people to leave their money inside the bank is what they will do is that they will increase interest rates. Okay, so when they increase the interest rates, they will do it until we move up along the demand curve and we reach this point, point C, and that is our new equilibrium interest rates Y1. So if I'm going to extend this all the way out here, okay, over here I got R1. Initially, I was at point A over here, interest, okay, at this point, okay, and then I have got, why not? So what I did was, I actually increased my income, correct? I increased my income, okay, and I increased it to Y1. So, what I have is actually this point over here. 
this is my new equilibrium point, right, as derived from my liquid assets market diagram. And this is, I'm just going to call it point B. Okay, so I'm going to connect these two dots together. And I have an upward sloping line. Okay, and this is your LM function. Okay, and it is affected by money supply. Okay, and prices. Right, you can see that price is here. So whenever money supply changes or the price changes, general price level, uh, we like to call it the CPI, Consumer Price Index. Uh, it would something will happen to the LM curve. Okay, we will not be learning about you know the LM curve uh, being steeper or flatter. Uh, what's going to happen is that actually it's just going to shift up and down. Okay, now uh, just a bonus, right? As you can see, I've drawn my LM curve in this way. But if you want to make a very good impression to the examiner, do it this way. Okay. Do it this way. You draw it slightly steeper, and don't let it touch the any of the axes. Okay. Uh, this this the reason for this is is learned in macroeconomics in the further units. So I'm not going to go through that. But if you want to make a good impression, just draw your LM curve this way, steep and away from the uh, R axis over here. Okay. Now moving on. Um, let's talk about changes in money supply. Okay. So uh, when the money supply increases. Okay, it is through some government policy and we call this government policy an expansionary monetary policy where the government increases the money supply to promote growth. Okay? And the other way around is called a contractionary money policy. Okay, when we put more money into the economy, uh, naturally it will grow, right? And uh, vice versa. It, not, not vice versa. Likewise, if you decrease the money supply, uh, your, 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 your country is going to you know, the growth is going to be lesser. Okay, so let's talk about what exactly happens when money supply increases. Alright, when money supply increases, what the government does to facilitate this is that it prints money. Yes, it literally prints money. Okay, I wish I could do that. Uh, never mind. It prints money and it uses this money to buy bonds from the banks. So, uh, in order to buy bonds, the, the government has to give the banks money, right, in exchange for the bonds. So, by putting, uh, pumping all this money in, into the banks, it actually increases the money supply. Okay? And we will go through these dynamics using the graphs later. And as for a decrease in money supply, a contractionary monetary policy, government sells bonds to banks. So banks will buy these bonds from the government and they have to give the government money for it. And the government puts it in its huge safe. Okay, and therefore that reduces the money supply. Okay, so let's talk about how the LM curve is going to move when we have an expansionary fiscal policy. Okay, so on this side I have my liquid assets market. And this side, I have my ISLM model without the IS first. Okay, so initially we had this. Okay, and that's our demand for money. Okay, and we have interest rates at R0. And we have an LM curve that looks like this. Okay, I didn't draw it, nice, draw it nicely, but okay, I think you get the point. Which is affected by money supply and prices. Okay, and we are at why not? Okay, we call this point A. We call this point A. Okay, so now assuming that the government does a fis uh, um, expansionary money monetary policy, so money supply increases. When money supply increases, the supply curve moves out. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my supply curve like that, moving outwards, and I have MS1 over P. Okay, so now at this point, we have actually moved from point A to point B, which is over here. Okay, at this point, there is an excess supply. Excess supply for liquid assets. So, uh, there's a lot of money around. Okay, so the banks don't want to hold this, okay, uh, because there's always this fixed amount that they want to be holding. So, what they do is they decrease interest rates. Okay, they decrease interest rates, then people will see that it's no longer uh, attractive to put my money in the bank. So, I redraw it. Okay, so what happens is that we move down along the demand curve and we get to point C and this was due to the lowering of interest rates at R1. So I'm going to expand this all the way here Okay, and this is interesting. You realize that uh, income has not changed, right? So income has not changed so I should still be along this line but I said now I'm at this point, point B. So my whole LM curve has actually shifted down and I have this LM M1 P not. Okay. Now, what what happens uh, when price changes? Okay. Uh, the the Allen curve will shift down. Okay. When your price drops. Okay. 
it makes sense, right? Your price drops, this figure becomes bigger. The denominator becomes smaller, this figure becomes bigger. So if this guy moves to this side, so if, let's say now my money supply were to, uh, my price were to drop, so instead of MS1 over P, uh, it will be MS0 over P1, where P1 is larger than P0. Okay, assuming there's not over there. Okay, so this is what happens when the uh, money supply increases or prices drop. Okay, so if prices drop, money money uh, supply hasn't changed, so you'll be M not P one. Okay, I think you get this point uh, Okay, so okay, we're almost at the end now. Actually, LM curve is pretty simple. I just gotta go through with you what happens if let's say there is a contractionary money supply, uh, money um, contractionary monetary policy. Okay, so just let me draw the graphs first. Alright, my money supply. Okay, and we have R naught and we have upward sloping. Okay, so now government decides to make the economy shrink. Okay, for to fight inflation. Alright. So what happens is that the government uh, sells bonds and the government uh, takes money back from the banks and this reduces the money supply. So the money supply curve is going to shift left this way. Okay. Now, from point A initially, we are now at uh, over here. Okay, we are over here at point B. Okay, because interest rates hasn't changed yet. Uh, banks remember, remember banks will always be slower than the government to implement any of their interest rate changing policies. Okay, so uh, over here what we have is we have an excess demand for money, right? Because this is now the new supply curve. Okay, so what happens is that when there's an excess supply for money, okay, uh, sorry, excess demand for money, what the, the bank wants is actually to keep more money because people are, want to withdraw more. So to prevent them from withdrawing more, what we'll do is that we'll entice them. We'll entice them by increasing interest rates. So they will move up the demand curve and they will end up at this point C and we have R1. I'm going to extend this all the way out here. Okay, and we have R1, in income hasn't changed, so from point A, we are moving up to point B, so the whole LN curve is going to shift up, M1, P0. So, if money supply doesn't change, when how does the LN curve shift up? That is when prices increase. Right, you see this thing over here, right? If let's say your price is increasing now, it's bigger, so the denominator is bigger, this figure will be smaller, therefore you will get something like this. So MS0 over P1, uh, P0 okay, will be lesser than MS0 over P1. Okay, so that is how uh, money supply, uh, uh, that's how the LN curve is going to shift up. Okay, in the exams, uh, you don't have to show this, okay, but in case you get stuck, in case you, 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 your, your, your mind is frozen for some, some reason, uh, you just got to do whatever we have done here and you should be able to understand where the LM curve shifts. And by also showing this in the working, you are telling the examiner that you understand uh, how the LM curve shift and what is the reason for it to, 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 to shift. And what's even better is that if you can narrate whatever that we have talked about here, all these uh, movements, okay, uh, how we actually got from point A to point B then to point C. Okay, uh, write it down in a short story, maybe just, um, yeah, four or five, uh, in point form will do. Just write it on the side. Okay, uh, and you will show the examiner your, your true understanding for, for the LM model. You realize that I don't just say, oh, uh, so since the supply curve has moved back, yeah, we just move from this point to this point. Uh, we don't, I, I don't do that because um, there is no economic intuition to explain why this happens. The examiner wants to know why things happen, so you have to identify and explain and tell a story, okay? Uh, it will definitely set you apart from the rest of the students that didn't get to watch this video, so you must share.